Today we'll talk about low amniotic fluid in pregnancy. Now amniotic fluid is a clear liquid that surrounds your baby in the uterus during pregnancy. This fluid provides a cushion that protects the baby from injury and allows room for growth, movement and development. Now amniotic fluid also keeps the umbilical cord from being squeezed between the baby and the wall of the uterus. In addition, the amount of amniotic fluid reflects the baby's urine output which is a measure of baby's well-being. It contains vital nutrition for the baby and also helps in lung development of the baby. Why do we fear low amniotic fluid? Now, low amniotic fluid is called oligohydramnios. This is a serious condition and it happens when the amount of amniotic fluid is less than expected for a baby's gestational age. Now, let us today discuss how oligohydramnios affects fetal outcome in a pregnancy. I'm Dr. Deepthi Asthana, Senior Obstetrician in Portis Hospital, Gurugram and Director of Kalosa Clinic. Stay connected till the end to know the treatment of this condition. Subscribe my channel Kalosa Gaini to have regular updates about female reproductive health. And you can also visit my websites drdeeptiasthana.com and kalosaacetics.com. Do you know how much amniotic fluid do you have during pregnancy? No, it depends on how many weeks pregnant you are. You begin making amniotic fluid about 12 days after conception. It is first made up of water, which is provided by the mother. And by about 20 weeks, the fetal urine becomes a primary substance. The amount of amniotic fluid you produce increases until its peak at 36 weeks of pregnancy, around 1000 ml that is. And after that, gradually your levels of amniotic fluid start decreasing. Now, how is oligohydramnios diagnosed? Now, if you have any signs of low amniotic fluid, your doctor will ask for the amount of amniotic fluid in your uterus using an ultrasound. The measuring index for this is AFI, which is amniotic fluid index. Now, if the amount of fluid is less than the recommended amount for the gestational age of your fetus, you may have oligohydramnios. Usually, if the AFI shows the fluid as less than 5 cm and there's absence of fluid pocket 2 to 3 cm in depth, or the fluid volume is less than 500 ml at about 32 to 36 weeks, then oligohydramnios is suspected. Now, how common is this oligohydramnios? Now, low amniotic fluid affects about 4% of people who are pregnant. It's most common in the last three months of pregnancy. This rate rises to about 12% in women who are past their due date because amniotic fluid levels decrease after 40 weeks of pregnancy. Now, what are the most common causes of oligohydramnios? Several factors can contribute to low amniotic fluid, such as congenital disabilities of the fetus. Now, this includes problems with the development of the kidneys or the urinary tract of the fetus that would cause lesser production of urine, leading to lower levels of amniotic fluid. There could also be leaking or rupture of membranes in mother. Now, this refers to a gush of fluid or a slow trickle of fluid that occurs because of a tear in the membranes. A premature rupture of membrane can also result in lower levels of amniotic fluid. Now, there can be problems with the placenta also. Now, if a women's placenta is not able to provide enough blood and nutrients for the baby, the baby may also stop recycling this fluid. Now, it is low in post-dated pregnancy also because beyond 42 weeks, our women can have low amniotic fluid levels due to decline in placental function. Now, what are the maternal complications which are associated with low fluid? Now, factors such as hypertension, preeclampsia, maternal dehydration, diabetes, and chronic hypoxia, these can all affect the levels of amniotic fluid. Now, what are the signs of low amniotic fluid? You may not know you have low amniotic fluid. However, your doctor may suspect if you're leaking fluid from your vagina, your uterus measures small on examination, you don't feel your baby moving enough, you're not gaining enough weight, and if you've had low amniotic fluid in prior pregnancy, then also you are at increased risk in this pregnancy. Now, coming to management and prognosis. Now, if you're diagnosed with low amniotic fluid, what happens next will depend on what's causing the fluid to be low and how severe it is. Your baby's gestational age, your health and your baby's health will be taken into consideration too. Now let us assess different scenarios with oligohydramnios. Number one, oligoamniotic sac in early pregnancy. 
Now this usually doesn't carry good prognosis and you might end up in a miscarriage. Number two, oligoamnios in second trimester. Now low amniotic fluid in the first six months of pregnancy is also more dangerous. The following complications may occur which includes deformities caused by compression in your uterus, preterm birth, miscarriages, stillbirths and there could also be infection if your water bag has broken early. By now, you would have had got the genetic testing done. Your doctor might ask you for fetal medicine specialist opinion who sometimes might recommend MU infusion also. Also, correcting the underlying condition sometimes corrects the low AFI automatically. I remember once I had lymphoma patient with severe oligohydromnios at 22 weeks and the moment chemotherapy was started, she responded and AFI corrected on its own. Now talking about oligohemnios in early third trimester, if you're less than 36 weeks pregnant, your doctor typically will review your baby's health, discuss why you might have low amniotic fluid and recommend monitoring your pregnancy with fetal ultrasounds. You may be asked to take an opinion from fetal medicine specialist. Your doctor will recommend drinking more fluids, especially if you're dehydrated. In some cases, it might be necessary to be admitted to the hospital to receive fluids through an IV. You need to rest, do deep breathing exercises and increase your protein intake. Now, complications could include umbilical cord compression, fetal growth restriction, respiratory issues or underdeveloped lungs of the fetus, and need for an early delivery and increased risk of cesarean delivery. There could be increased risk for infection also if your water bag has broken too early. Now, what do you do when you have oligoamnios at 36 or 37 weeks? Now, if you have low amniotic fluid and you are 36 to 37 weeks, the safest option might be delivering the baby. If the AFI is too low, your doctor may recommend cesarean section for the delivery. Now, to conclude, Low amniotic fluid or oligohydramnios is a potentially serious condition. It can cause complications with your pregnancy and affect your baby's growth. Try to remain calm as most people who are diagnosed with low AFI go on to have healthy babies. Your doctor will monitor you closely and work with you to determine the safest treatment plan. Attending all prenatal visits and sharing your pregnancy symptoms is the best way to detect potential issues. Now, thanks for staying together till the end and hope you like the information shared. Do subscribe my channel Closer Gaini for regular Gaini updates and follow me on other medias like Instagram. Till then, take good care of yourself and keep enjoying your pregnancy. Bye.